All right, getting all excited here. We're gonna have our, for this recording session, everybody, we're gonna have a, a little bit different setup. We're gonna have two guests and me, and I am going to sort of just be the traffic cop. And so, yeah, you're gonna like this one, but I gotta play director here because with these three-way conversations, <clears throat> they can get, <laughs> They can get a little crazy. So there's my guy. There's one of our guys, at least. I'm talking to myself here, Jake, just uh, because I, I've already started the, the video recording. And um, the way I'm doing this now is we cut this up. You're sideways. Oh, there you go. That's better. How are you feeling? Good. Good. Just keep my coffee. And I went to Nia Bay with the the kids and we all got sick. You want where? Weekend. To the coast. Oh, okay. On a blitz trip and oh man, it was it was good, but it was snowing and we all got sick and my youngest puked all over us in our sleep and oh no. <laughs> and then we drove back. It's about a four hour drive. Drove back last night and I got sick and. And uh, I just actually just got up and going. Oh, did you? Well, yeah. thank you for toughing through it, man. I know Tony's excited about this. I am as well. Yeah. Um, you know, we're, as you know, we're in Arizona right now. So I'm sort of working out of this little apartment that Sandy and I are at. And it's, <laughs> it's kind of, it's, it's been okay. This is my third interview that I've recorded since we've been in this place. I'll be glad when I get back to my studio at home in our other house. And it's like, but it's, it's good training. You know how it is with training and doing reps. You know, you've done the, you've done a lot of media stuff, obviously. Um, what I think I want to do here, Jake, to kind of keep this three-way thing happening. I'm just sort of acting like a traffic cop and each we have a five, it's a five segment show. So they're each about 10 minutes long. And I, I have, intros that I do for each one of some reads that I do for a couple of sponsors. So um, I will, I will come to you first on questions and say, Hey, Jake, you know, tell me about your, your friendship with Tony. We're just going to, what I'm titling this thing is friendship save lives, the fisherman and the cert and the surgeon. Uh, you know, I just think that they, I, I think Tony sent me this long, all this stuff. He, he's so, you know, detailed, you know, how Tony is. And it's like, Tony, we had dinner last night. And I said, Tony, my whole thought on this is just your friendship with Jake and that whole, how it all came to be, because we just do upbeat, good talk, radio podcasting. And um, it's just, people need to hear good stories about just good things. And that's just the way we roll. We don't do politics and we don't do religion. Other than that, we're wide open, but it's all about just giving people hope. You gotta have hope. So I don't know how much I didn't plan on really saying much about your um, uh, media career. I don't know what the rules are on all that kind of stuff. And so I don't even know where you want me to go with that, but. Um, so, yeah, I don't even think we, I don't even think we need to talk about it. I mean, I mean, if we could, if you wanted to, that's up yeah. to you. Yeah. I think there's, I think we have a lot already to cover. I agree. And I mean, that'll be a part of the conversation, I'm sure. sure yeah, but I, I, I think with where, what, what we're talking about, I think it's more important to talk about dreams and goals and, and friendships and relationships and yep, yep. because all that perfect, perfect. the secret to my success is Jake, those my relationships. Man. Hey. Perfect. Good. All right. Here's, well, here's, okay. how, so here's how it'll work. Um, I was just giving Jake kind of a quick thing. Yeah, Jake, again, your dreams and goals. I did read your book while I was staying at Tony's house and, um, great. You had an interesting life, man. I'll tell you what, we all go through this stuff. So it's like, congratulations for surviving and, um, coming through it. My 25th anniversary of sobriety is July 27th of this summer. And so it's like, believe me, I get it totally. <laughs> So it resonated with me. And um, so, Tony, here's how, what we're going to do. I'm going to do my reads. Tony's been on before, Jake. I'm going go to I'm gonna go to Jake first, Tony, and then sure. have him you know, just throw the question to start. 
and we'll just keep our answers short and tight. If you guys see me do the one or the short thing, you know we're getting close to the break because we do have the 10 minute segments. And so just bear with me on that. And then Jake will give his, his point of view, Tony. And then when he's done, I may say, hey, okay, Tony, what's your take? That way it keeps things a little bit more symmetrical. And so we can kind of keep a, a because if we don't, we'll step on each other and the audio will get all fucked up. So it's like, um, I just wanted to just kind of, that's kind of my game plan. So you guys, you got any questions? Either one of you guys got any questions? Nope. All right. I think we're in pretty good shape. I think this should right. be uh, fun. Oh, yeah, How do I see all three? All three of us. Like, well, the way it's working for me, Jake, is whoever's speaking is going to see. It takes the the precedence, right? Yeah, I think so. Um, I think that's how Zoom works. I don't typically do three way conversations. It's always just one on one. So um, I'm just seeing a small little box of your face right now, and then so when I go back and forth to you guys we'll uh we'll flip back and forth so we'll see how it goes and it, it'll be good let me uh get my software let's here. fucking wing it <laughs> just not drop any f-bombs so i don't have to have uh you know when Mitch does all of our editing i don't want to hit him with like hey man i got an f-bomb here and i got because <laughs> tony wait if if i get started tony will get started then jake will probably get started and then it'll be just i'm the, the worst <laughs> no. Oh, no, man. Uh, i am the worst I, I'm actually the worst. In the past, you real quick, I mean, I'm actually the worst. No, 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 no. And Tony knows this because I, I was the headset guy for the football team at Michigan State for like 20 years. And so I worked with some of the 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 best, best professional cursors ever with uh, football coaches. I mean, uh, Pat Narduzzi, who's now the head coach at Pittsburgh, that guy was our defensive coordinator. He took swearing to the next level. Tony knows all about this stuff. These football coaches are crazy. All right, let me uh, let me get this thing started here, guys. Let me roll. You may hear music, you may not. Some of my guests do, some don't. Um, you good, Jake? Yeah. Okay, here we go. And Tony, we're going to go to Jake first, and then you, and then back to me, and um, we're just going to riff. Let me get this part up here. Uh, that one's up. Getting... I'm getting multiple iPads up here. They drop. All right. Here we go, boys. Megan Merchant was with us. If you give me a minute, Megan has got an amazing, amazing story. And I hope you can check it out because she's a long-term guest with the radio program. And she's just an incredible woman working millennial mom episode and uh, check it out. She's had a lot of adversity in her life. And I, I love talking to people who have had adversity in their life, like our show today. And this is going to be a different one, everybody. We got Jake Anderson and we've got Dr. Tony Avellino with us calling this one friendship save lives, the fisherman and the surgeon. Kind of like if you guys remember the, uh, the odd couple television show, with Tony Randall and Jack Klugman, Felix and Oscar. These two guys are like the real life version of that, except you've got a world-renowned surgeon, pediatric neurosurgeon, Tony Avellino, and you've got this world-renowned fisher guy, fisherman, fisher person, whatever. <laughs> I mean, no, no offense, Jake, but I'm sure that there's none taken, but this is the this is the best of the best because you never you never never know when these friendships are going to come along. So first we're going to go to Jake and uh, Jake Anderson and let Jake kind of tell everybody about himself. Take a couple minutes to tell his quick snapshot story and and then we'll bring Tony in and we're just going to go around Robin here because we'll step on each other. But I want to welcome to the radio program my pals <laughs> Jake Anderson and Tony Avellino. Jake. How are you? Please tell everybody about yourself and uh, appreciate all of all of the things that you've done, especially helping my friend Tony. Thank you for everything you do. Uh, yeah, no problem. It goes. It obviously went both ways. Um, my name is Jake Anderson. Um, I own and operate the fishing vessel Saga. 
I'm a captain for eight years now. I was born in Anacortes, Washington, which is a small fishing community in Northwest uh, Washington. I uh, had a good upbringing. My father was a uh, uh, had his doctorate in education and my mom was kind of a stay-at-home mom. Uh, they had, there were six of us. I had five sisters and I'm the baby. And uh, how, how, was that, how was that growing up is uh, yeah, with all of those, with all that. Uh... <laughs> I never had a girlfriend because they would always tell me <laughs> not to be like, so I never became that that person that they didn't like well it turns out that those were the 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 guys that they liked <laughs> so i never had a girlfriend swear to god not until i was like 20 oh my anyway god. that's a whole nother show <laughs> that's a ther that's a therapy session <laughs> so what we do here see this is this is slash therapy slash radio slash video and we just share it all out there because we've all been through this bull crap I mean, your story i read your book it was great read your problems with substance abuse and your skating career and all of that it's a phenomenal man you've done some amazing things and you've recovered and you've come on the other side and you're way better for it now and it's it's greatness so congratulations yeah and that's that's good to hear because you know like in anacortis what was good about being uh, a part of a very small community is um, you don't have like big city life to see what you're 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 able to use your imagination more because you don't know what has been done and what hasn't been done. You only know by looking in a magazine or on TV. And I think one of the keys to my success was being so secluded on this island. Uh, called Fidelgo Island in Anacortes because I've always had that ability to believe. And even when things got so dark as they did when I was in my 20s, um, I, I didn't understand drug addiction and alcoholism. I believe they're a disease. I believe they're the same um, I, because I've done them both. Some people haven't, so they, they have a hard time relating. And then society is pressured into believing a certain thing, so those those uh, products can still be sold and bought, and so people can get confused. And they uh, uh, dealing with something like substance abuse, it, it's also a mental health issue, and it gets really confusing. And anyway, I don't I don't want to consume up all the time, but so about twenty years old. I, I got injured. I was already kind of slowly drifting into alcoholism as my escape. I had some childhood trauma. And uh, what ultimately happened was I, I gave up. I didn't fail my career. I, I just gave up on skateboarding because I didn't understand really what was going on. And I didn't understand about goals and dreams and that everything I was doing was right. My positive thinking, all these things were great. I just had a disease and I didn't know about it. And then about 2005, I really kind of settled down and realized, okay, this skateboarding thing isn't going to probably happen. Let's let's not give up on it. Let's not quit. Let's just set it aside and, and find something, you know, because I was 25, I didn't have a place to live other than my parents. And that was shameful. So I, I spent a lot of time on the streets. And that's why you'll hear me say that I was homeless. Well, a lot of homeless people are homeless by choice, not by, there's very few that get foreclosed on and they have to be homeless. Those people usually survive and get out of it. But uh, anyway, so about so you, made, so you made the turn, excuse me, but you made that, you made that, that leap of faith and you got yourself going in the right direction. And I'm going to bring Tony in here, um, Jake, so that we can have a little bit more equal time for him so to talk. Tony, talk about how you um, came to meet Jake, because I mean, you talk sure. about you guys who are from different planets. You guys yeah. are from universes. I mean, you're a world renowned pediatric neurosurgeon and Jake is a, a famous fisherman crab guy. I mean, so it's like, at the how time I was just, a, I was just a druggy loser. Exactly. <laughs> No, 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 no. Oh, like, what were you doing hanging out with me? No, no, no. 
I mean, go ahead, no. Tony. What were you doing hanging out with him? Yeah. So, I mean, so uh, it's truly a remarkable story is uh, uh, because I often say as you go through the journey of life, things occur um, and it's always difficult to process the why. Um, and, uh, you know, and so um, I first met Jake uh, 15 years ago plus. Uh, and so when I was at the University of Washington, um, I was on the Ronald McDonald um, and, and every year we used to have, an uh, an event where we raised, um, and, uh, and during, uh, one of the first auctions we had, it was dinner with the crew of the North, um, uh, dinner with the crew of the North West student boat. Um, and, uh, uh, and at that time, Jake was a greenhorn on the boat. Um, and so when I met Jake, uh, he was not in a great space and little did Jake know that I was not in a, and I was not in a great space either. Um, you know, but, uh, but, but my wife and I, um, were fortunate to actually have, uh, uh, this, this event. Um, and, and it was remarkable because at this event, uh, the crew of the Northwestern, um, uh, my wife and myself and uh, uh, some friends, and we had a, such a remarkable time. Uh, but at that point, as I could tell that Jake and I were like brothers uh, in that we connected, uh, we connected at the heart. Um, and, uh, and from that day is uh, Jake and I became really great, great friends. Hold that thought, Tony, because that's a perfect jumping off spot point here. I want to reset everything here. Okay, everybody, we're calling this one Friendships Save Lives. We've got the odd couple. We've got Tony. We've got Captain Jake, Jake Anderson. They're exactly like Felix and Oscar from the 1970s TV show. I don't know how else to say it. They're at a whole nother level of this thing. I mean, and we're going to talk about their friendship, how their friendship became what it is, it's going to be fun. It's going to be hilarious. We're going to share some stories. Might even have some tears here, everybody. Hard to say. I get emotional. Everybody does. Friendship Save Lives, The Fisherman and the Surgeon. Tony Avellino, Jake Anderson, Tom Mancho. Let's see if my thing actually works this time. We'll see. Here we go. The second segment of the Tom Mad Show is sponsored by Craig Style, Ameriprise Financial. He is our guy. He is the man. Your Ameriprise Financial Advisor, our Ameriprise Financial Advisor, Craig Style helped us he can help you plan for the life you want today and well into the future and his team can as well got a couple of phone numbers 1-800-528-1355 his local number is 517-483-4893 craig.styles at ampf.com with the right financial advisor helping you do whatever you're going to do like with us and again full disclosure Craig has all of our refirement savings because he's our guy and he's been with us way before we gave him any of our uh, savings. You can get a hold of him. You can also find both of our sponsors at our home, at our uh, website, tomatshow.com. Go to the bottom and you'll find it there. His offices are located 2400 Lake Lansing Road, Suite B is in Bism or Brilliant Lansing, Michigan. 48912. Here are some stations in and out of the network, WGHN 92.1 in Grand Haven, Michigan, WGIM 1240, Lansing, Michigan, WKLQ 1490, Muskegon, Whitehall, WJRW 1340 AM in Grand Rapids, WYPB FM 94.5 in Mackinac City, and the PBS affiliate at Michigan State University, WKAR News Talk AM 870, the big one. Any stations want to carry our show, hit us up, go to our website, go to the contact box, send Sandy a note, away you go. I want to thank Craig again, Craig, Craig, Craig Styles, for creating his proprietary 
algorithm. He created an algorithm 20 years ago before algorithms were even a cool thing. To, nobody knew what an algorithm was because he's an engineer and because he's got an MBA. He started Desideri Analytics in addition to being with Ameriprise, and that's how he makes light of weighted decisions. Also want to thank Stephen I.V. Gruber, the owners of the Michigan Talk Network, for carrying our program, having the faith in us, and allowing us to do the thing. And lastly, we have those four books on Amazon, that thing called Amazon, and that other thing called the Internet, and you can find them there. Please do. Without our sponsors, we can't bring to you these shows and these guests like Jake Anderson, Captain Jake Anderson, and Dr. Tony Avellino. Now, I want to say their official titles because it kind of brings to light what um, how this friendship between these two guys, 15 years worth, and how their friendships got, they, first they got together and they made themselves better. And I want to thank, first, I want to say thank you to Jake for helping Tony. And Tony, thank you for helping for helping Jake. I mean, it's the whole thing. So Tony, we left off with you and you were talking about the 15 years you've known each other and you made that connection. Continue that thread for a couple minutes here and just talk about you and Jake and how it actually you two kind of got together because Jake's a pretty well-known guy and you bought this package and you explained that in the, in the first segment, but, but continue that thread a little bit and then we'll bring Jake back in. Go ahead, Tony. Yeah. So, I mean, um, who would uh, think that a crab fisherman and pediatric nurses would actually be uh, uh, great friends. Um, and really um, I can um, honestly say that I'm here today uh, because if it wasn't for my wife and Jake, uh, because um, people that know my story um, is uh, in 2009, I hit rock bottom um, and I vowed in, uh, and I never told anyone um, until, um, until uh, nine years later. Uh, and when I came forward with my story is uh, uh, when I tried to take my life is um, I hit rock bottom, something I'm not, um, something that I don't like to speak about, uh, but, but, but at that time is the only two people that know, knew were, um, were my wife and, um, um, and I must say that Jake was the other person. Um, and, and even though um, uh, Jake probably would not say this, but, uh, uh, but Jake has changed my life and he saved me uh, more than words that I could say. Um, it's, uh, uh, Jake is a remarkable person. I'm uh, extremely proud of the man that he became because 15 years uh, when I knew him, he was, um, uh, he was not doing well. Um, but okay, Tony, hold that, hold that thought there because I want to get Jake's take on what you just said. Jake, you heard what Tony said about you helped him. You were the only other person. When you hear him say that, when you hear Dr. Avellino say that, what? how does that make you feel? At the, at the time, I mean, I, I uh, it was going both ways. So when Tony was hitting rock bottom in 2009, I also was hitting um, a rock bottom in the fact that uh, I stopped drinking in 2001, August 26, but I didn't get sober until July 20th, 2009. So I haven't drank in 20 whatever years, but I still actively had symptoms of the disease. I still was carrying the disease of addiction and it was, it was rampant and I would switch drugs uh, to try to, I just was trying to live normally like everybody else. And I, and I didn't, couldn't believe, I didn't believe that I could. Well, about 2009, um, there, there were certain thoughts coming in. I met Tony, what, 2007 or eight. I can't, I can't quite remember, but in meeting him, the belief system started to come back. Um, that I had when I was younger with like skateboarding. Um, me and uh, my other close friend, uh, Casey Rigney, we just started believing we were gonna be professionals. 
And then that's what he eventually became. And it, it, it was just in those beliefs. And when I met Tony, I started to believe again, you know, that, well, maybe I could be um, a respectable human being. Maybe I could be a, a doctor or maybe even a neurosurgeon, who knows? And, and, and when, Tony, when I found out, you know, Tony had those thoughts of suicide, well, as an um, alcoholic is what I identify myself with, but I've done them all. Those are normal thoughts of an alcoholic, are suicidal thoughts. Um, uh, you you have them all the time, and, and if you know an alcoholic, you'll hear him say it quite. So when when I first heard that of Tony, um, I think maybe the bond came from the fact that I wasn't a, afraid to hear that. I didn't think any less of him. You know, I knew many people who have have had those same problems and it is not a fun place to be in because there's no convincing you out of it. Let me, let so me jump can... in real quick, Jake, please. I, and Jake Anderson and Tony Avellino are our guests here, but I think, cause I'm going to carry this through to break here. And this is a very, this is a very deep topic and a very, an awesome story. But what I think I'm hearing from you, and we'll talk about this when we come out of the next break was you both had the inner voices happening inside your heads. <clears throat> soulmate that you could have clarity with and bounce <laughs> off of each other and actually things become crystallized to you and from my own perspective having my alcohol issues for 25 years of being sober now for 25 years i totally understand where jake's going and we're going to go to break here and we're going to talk more about this with the odd couple friendship save lives the fisherman and the surgeon jake anderson dr tony abelino we'll be right back That one went better. Thank God. So, hey, doing a great job, you guys. Are you feeling good about this? You want to come back? Um, I, what I'd like to talk to you, Tony, I want to go to you first on this one after I do my read about the clarity, what, you know, the clarity that Dick was talking about in the inner voice thing. Talk about that for a couple minutes, and then um, we'll, we'll start getting into the nitty gritty of having the million dollar hands on this boat out in the middle of. God knows where. This is I mean. when it starts to get good, Tom. It yeah. starts to get good. Yeah, I know. So this is when we get into the five-year uh, plans and the uh, fucking napkin and no, fucking, yeah. all right, I think let's just try. What the fuck do I got to lose? <laughs> all right. I'm glad I'm not recording this on radio right now, but because this is on the podcast, this is hilarious. So it's like <laughs> sweet. <laughs> all right. Here we go. Here we go. All right. You guys kill me. This is great. The simplest way to connect with us is via our website, TomMatShow.com, where you will find a redesigned, simpler page. Our YouTube presence is rocking and rolling. It's growing. It's getting some likes. People are starting to find it. It's just, you know, I never did video. I always did radio. And now that we're doing that as well, in addition to the radio programming and the RFZ, and all of the other social media you can find us. Facebook is Tom Matt Show. It's Tom Matt Show across the board with Instagram and Twitter. But Facebook is is um, where you can find us. But the YouTube thing is is huge too. Our mission with our business, Andy and I, is to build an engaged society and team like these two guys I got on the program today. And I can't wait to get back to this story here because it's going to be good. Stick around. We want to connect with all of you. So whichever social media is your flavor. Go for it. Send us a note. We'll respond to anything and everything because we're here to help. The refirement zone, and that's what we call this thing, the RFZ is all about community collaboration, cooperation, the three C's of sharing stories and ideas. The RFZ, please go to that YouTube page, the YouTube uh, page at their, the RFZ, and you can go to the Tom Matt Show YouTube page as well, at the RFZ, at Tom Matt Show easy enough. All right. I'm going to go back to Dr. Avellino here because we're going to, and we're going to get into some nitty gritty things. These guys are going to talk about this boat thing. I have absolutely, I am, when we do the hunter, non-hunter episodes, you guys, Tony knows this, Jake, you, you're going to find out right now. I am the non-hunter guy of 
all of those episodes that I've done throughout the years in the show. I don't know diddly crap about any of this stuff. I mean, my family are hunters and fisher people and all this stuff. I don't know anything about it. We're setting this thing up. You guys are getting together. Tony's going to go on this. Tony's a pediatric neurosurgeon, for God's sake. Tony, before we jump into the, the boat action and you tell me some of the fun stories that you do, I know you guys got a ton of them. Let's talk about, and both of you have a chance to discuss this with the inner voices and the clarity of your issues. When you come to grips and you really look inside your own head and you have that conversation, that's when things can get better. And that's what we're trying to do here for our listeners is, is share your story. So Tony, please yeah. talk about your inner voices a little bit more yeah. and pretty. go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So um, I often say that uh, um, life is a journey, uh, but, but when curveballs uh, are in the way, you have to listen to your story, you have to learn and you have to heal. And, uh, and, and, Throughout my life, um, um, as a surgeon and as a physician, is is getting people well again, getting people to perform. And I often say, is performance equals skill minus interference. And what I actually mean by that is, uh, you can have all this in order to perform at the highest level. Uh, you can have all the skill in the world if you're an elite fisherman like Jake, elite surgeon, elite athlete, elite scholar, elite whatever you do. But if you can't block out your interference, whatever it is, if you're not happy and satisfied, if you're not doing purposeful work, if you're not in happy relationships, um, if you're not showing compassion towards yourself, it's very difficult to perform at that highest level. Um, and, uh, and, and through the years, is, uh, is I didn't get to be where I am today if I didn't have coaching and mentoring along the way. Um, and, and I think the, uh, the, the beauty of Jake's and my story is how the mentorship both ways, uh, Jake mentoring me, um, I mentoring Jake, has really allowed us to actually heal. Um, and, and as Jake says uh, on the boat, is safety is freedom, but you have to have a plan. Uh, and so one of the most important things that uh, Jake and I've done over the years is, is really meeting uh, regularly and uh, developing a plan uh, is, is because in, in order to get to that next level and, and perform and find joy is, is, as I often say, is you have to have that passion. Um, and for the last uh, 15 years, I, I keep on saying is I want to be I want to have that passion like Jake. You all know, right, is, right, uh, right. is because hold, hold I'm there. at both. But Jake is passionate about what he does. Hold, hold that thought, Tony, because I want to yeah. go right to you. Okay, so you've got this pediatric neurosurgeon, world-renowned guy who is like looking at you like you're a rock star, accomplished person. You've done a lot of media. You've done, you're, you're out on this. We're not even going to get into the fishing stuff just yet. We'll get into that in the next segment. But again, the inner voices and the clarity when Tony said safety is freedom, Jake, what what do you think when you hear that? Well, I think it's great that I because I think it's great that he would actually say that again because that's what I believe. If you look at things like um, uh, action sports like skateboarding, if you can safely wreck or safely run down um, fifteen stair handrails then you have the freedom to learn any trick you want. And the same applies to the most dangerous job, crab fishing. As if I can be safe, uh, which means in my business, if I can um, protect the crew, if I can fix holes and stop fires and save lives uh, medically like Tony, then I have the freedom to go against the biggest storms in the world. and when we are fishing in the Bering Sea, those are the worst climates or that is the worst, worst weather system that mother nature can provide is actually out in the Bering Sea during winter because she freezes up. You have huge wind storms. You have big waves that are 35 feet tall, which is about, oh, 70 to 80 feet from the very bottom. And, and so when you're thinking like that, when we go out, and we're at actually fishing, we're actually 
uh, having fun doing it because we've checked all the safety boxes and we are now free to proceed forward and enjoy what we like. Like, let's just say for instance, it's minus 20 degrees, right? Wave heights are 20 feet. Well, we just buy a bunch of heaters. <laughs> and then you do your job and then you run back to the heater as fast as you can because you only have a few seconds before you could possibly get frostbite. So in that, safety is freedom. So we're safe. And as the more safe we are, the more we have the freedom to poke our nose out and run back in. And then we can push the bill as far as humanly possible. What you find out is that humans are amazing things. Uh, it does not matter, uh, gender, color, whatever. It, humans are humans and they're amazing. And so this collaboration with the neurosurgeon is perfect because I can understand the brain so I can push not only myself, but my team. And surprisingly, it actually works because I have one of the strongest teams in the fleet. They, they aren't led by fear. They're actually led by love, goals, uh, dreams where I believe it's one thing to be great, but what is truly greatness is when you can make everyone around you great. Yeah. And that's what we try to do. All right, hold, hold, hold it there. Tony, I got a minute. Yeah. I, need you, I need you to talk about that, what he just said with the love goals and dreams. Take about 40 seconds, and then I'm going to go to break, and we're going to come back and start talking about going out on this boat. Please, what's your, what's your feeling when you hear that? Yeah, so uh, I've learned more on a crab boat that I can apply to healthcare to keep people safe. And it's all about teamwork, communication, and connecting at the heart. Uh, and, and really, is uh, like Jake said, Jake is an incredible captain. He knows each other's strengths and weaknesses. He brings out the absolutely best in people to perform at their highest level. Uh, but, but, I, but, but, but it's all about, because if, if you think about life, um, everything is uh, uh, everything happens if you have lack of teamwork or you don't communicate very very well. Uh, but but I think what Jake does on the boat, it's not about himself. It's about we as the team to keep each other safe, to catch our quota in in crazy weather, and keeping each other safe. But 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 I mean at the end of the day, I can't impress him uh, upon what Jake said. Is connecting at the heart is absolutely critical. Hold that, hold that, Tony, because we're going to go to break here. Unbelievable story, Jake Anderson, Tony Avellino. Friendship save lives. The fisherman and the surgeon. Tom Mitchell. All right, got to do another in the read here, and then we're jumping back in. Now, what I was thinking, you guys, is um because we got it kind of set up a little bit. And obviously we could do this again. And, 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 and Jake, when I do a first time interview with a guest, it's always like what I call high altitude. So this is, per, it's fitting perfectly. You know, we, we could deep dive the substance abuse issues or the drinking issues or anything. Yeah. Deep From here on out, we got two more segments, about 20 minutes. Um, let's talk about you getting this badass doctor on your boat. And it's like, I just want to hear this. I just want to hear your whole take on it. So I'm going to go to you first with this thing. I'll set it all up. Okay. Yes. Here we go. Doing great, guys. Rock, rock, rock. Where's my rock read? Here we go. Brock Flesher with the selling team of Keller Williams Realty is our guy has been our guy, will always be our guy. Full disclosure on him as well. Buyer, seller agent for us two times over. He is, he took care of us and he relieved all of that anxiety that went through when we had to have that tough decision about getting rid of Big House Holt, our, our forever home that is no longer our forever home. He helped us with that. Brock is the guy that we trusted. He helped us and it all worked out great. I hope that you can take a chance to go to the reality of real estate on the website, tomatshow.com. Listen to some of his episodes. 
go to the financial fitness with Craig, listen to some of his episodes, listen to these people and their stories. Cause we're all about story here. We're all about doing and sharing the love and the story. Brock will help you sell your home without hassles. He'll help you get to the financial side of things. The last episode he was here, we did a, uh, and I actually put up a couple of shorts on YouTube, you guys, that talking about finances and how he had his five-step plan. You want to go there. His phone numbers, here's a couple of numbers coming at you. 517-853-6408. 853-6408. You go online to kwsellingteam.com, kwsellingteam.com. Google search Brock Fletcher. But here's the here's the key number. 517-303-3262, 517-303-3262. That is the number to the cell phone in his pocket that he has constantly with him. And want you guys to send him a text. Say you heard it from Tommy. When you say Tommy, he knows it came from radio. And that helps us all understand that his investment's been good with us. And he's been with us a long time now. So I'm telling you guys, when it comes to this financial stuff, when it comes to the real estate stuff, these are big items in your life. Find people that can help you get better. Like our show today. Our show today is exactly along these lines. Friendship saved lives. The fisherman and the surgeon. Our two guys helped Sandy and I. And the story that we're sharing today is an amazing story about the fisherman and the surgeon. So we're going to get back to this. All right. So Jake Anderson's with us. Dr. Tony Avellino's with us as well. All right, Jake, let's get into some crab fishing. Talk to the, the know nothing host here. I'm just like thinking, all right. So this, this doctor, this guy has got million dollar hands, $5 million hands. He's got, he's coming on your boat and take it from there. Please just set it up and I mean, what did, what were you thinking? How, how, how were you feeling when you, uh, when he first came onto your, on your uh, boat, Captain? Well, it, petrified to say the least, right? Because <laughs> your hands are, you're everything on the boat. Well, if I can't use your hands expend, expendably, then I'm kind of screwed. But to first understand how, Dr. Tony Avellino got onto the boat, you have to understand how Jake Anderson got to where he is. Now, I've always fished, right? <laughs> but after me and Tony met, uh, Tony had a way of drawing out the, the best in me, and, and I believed in him. Um, and so we would have lunches, and... Um, he would uh, uh, basically uh, uh, the the famous the famous meeting at uh, the Pyramid Ale House in Seattle was Pyramid, my favorite. Basically, <laughs> pulled out my heart, set it on the table, grabbed a napkin, threw it on the table, grabbed a pen or a crayon or whatever the hell we had, and he just basically asked me, "What do you want to do? What do you want to be?" And we we wrote it down. He says, "I, I we need to do a five year plan." I said, all right, we wrote down a few things. I can't remember what exactly was on there, but it was ultimately becoming a captain and these things. Well, we did the first five-year plan, which in my mind was a complete fantasy. It was, he just, we just drew out all my fantasies out on this five-year plan. We did the first one in three years. We did the second five-year plan in three years. And then I remember reading some of them and it's like a joke now because these were things I didn't, this is like any of us saying, I want to be an astronaut. That's how much I believed I was going to accomplish these things. Anyway, so I get here. So to understand Jake Anderson and the captain that is sitting in this chair, that this neurosurgeon with these $5 million hands, the operation he's about to walk onto, you have to understand that the neurosurgeon himself built that person and helped pave the way for that individual to come. So he, without Tony, you wouldn't have Captain Jake Anderson because I didn't have anybody that helped me believe that I could do anything like that because I was, it's such a cutthroat industry that they're going to, they tell you, um, I was involved in television and 
and the fishing industry, both very cutthroat, both, both have a lot of nepotism involved in them. And there's no way to really get to the top. So it was really just a, a, a fantasy. Well, I got to the top of both those with the help of Tony. Now, those, now that is the, the truly, truly amazing thing. I don't even know how the hell we did it. I don't know how it was even possible. Uh, anyway, so we get there and to get back to bringing this neurosurgeon on this crab boat, right? Now, crab fishing in general is very archaic. It's, it, it's a survivalist game. Now, again, you're in the most dangerous conditions Mother Nature can provide on, Mother, on planet Earth. Very, very dangerous. Everything is where you have carnival equipment and most of us are like carnies. You, you, in order to be a good crab fisherman, you have to have a couple missing teeth, a couple missing fingers. You got to smell like cabbage. You got to have usually an alcohol problem. Now, that's just a joke, and that's not true in all cases. But it, you know, the point is, is it's a rough, rough way to live, and it's all about survival. And here comes. We're getting the picture. We got the picture, and I, you know, I want to give Tony a, a, a minute here. Jake, thank you for that. That was awesome. And, and I hate to cut you off, and the listeners are probably going, "God dang it, Tom, let that guy talk." Tony, I need you to kind of have a little input on this thing. You got about two and a half minutes here. Please take that, and I'll I'll cut you off when I need to. But what he just, what Captain Jake was just saying, the napkin yeah. pyramid yeah. Ale house. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and. Uh, um, you know, as I'm a true believer, it's not what you take, uh, it's how you give back. Um, and I often say that I didn't get to be where I am today if I didn't have coaches and mentors along the way. Um, and, and ever since Jake and I first met, uh, you know, connecting at the heart. And, uh, and I mean, Jake is a uh, brother um, and, uh, and really, um, you know, it's a, even though I helped him, he helped me just as much too, you know, but, but I, but I think what Jake said is in order to get to that next level is you have to have a plan, you know, it's, uh, is if you're making like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, you know, you need the peanut butter, you need the jelly, you need the bread, right? You know, so, so Jake had the, the infrastructure, uh, but most important thing that, that Jake had and what I look for, um, when I want people on my team in the operating room, there's people that are passionate about what they're doing. Uh, I don't really care how great they are, uh, but if they're passionate about what they're doing and if they want to make a difference, that's really important. And I think what Jake had is Jake has the passion, you know, and, and as Jake says uh, uh, multiple times, is you have to do something in life that you're passionate about, not because it makes a lot of money or or, or prestige or, or whatever it is. But at the end of the day, if you're, if you're passionate about what you're doing, it brings you joy. Um, and I can honestly say that Jake put himself at risk having me on the boat twice. Uh, but, uh, but, um, but I think, um, you know, what I learned is how to make healthcare safer. Um, and sometimes you have to stretch. You have to put yourself in these challenging positions to learn. Um, and, and as Jake said, I've planned, but it's how you continuously learn and get better. Um, and, and it was really, uh, truly inspiring, inspiring to me to see Jake, uh, the person that he's become. You know, he's been captain. He's married. He has three kids. He has a house. He has cars. I mean, you know, he, he you know, uh, but, but that brings me more joy. Uh, what brings me the most joy is people that I help and mentor along the way. And I always say the pupil always surpasses the master. And Jake is the pupil and he has surpassed me the master. So, <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We're going to go to break here. We're going to come back. We're going to finish it. I want, I want you guys to think about during break. I want to think about, I want you to think about a story with the two of you on the crab boat or whatever the heck it's called or whatever this I'm sorry, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I'm, I really, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. So anyways, think about the story. We're going to come back in the last segment of the show, everybody. And we're going to share a story with these, with these two amazing guys, Captain Jake Anderson, Dr. Tony Avellino, Tom Matt here. I'm just directing this thing. I don't know what the heck I'm steering this ship. Hopefully we'll be right back. Oh my God. 
All right, one more to go. And I'm going to do a quick, really quick read. And then I'm going to go, who wants to go first? Jake, you want to go first with a story? And uh, I, I got mine. I'm sure Tony's got Tony. All right, all right, so let's go. With I'm going to go with, but it's not, it's not dangerous for me and my team. It was, it's constantly talked about. All right, well, let's go with your story first. And then Tony, you do your rebuttal to that story if you'd like. Or were sure. you a huge to... wave story? I took a huge monster wave. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> oh my god, I gotta regroup. Where's my other card at? I'm losing my freaking mind here. Let's go. This is great. Come on, computer. Here we go. If you're a nonprofit school, church, or youth group, and you need to spice it up with some talent, please go to our website, tommetshow.com, contact box, share with us your situation, because we are accepting applications, we have been for quite some time now, for a speaking engagement to help you raise money, whatever. This is a pro bono, which means freebie. I'll bring in the talent, Craig Styles. Jake Anderson, Tony Evelyn, they don't even know about this stuff. I didn't even tell them about it. But seriously, Brock Fletcher, I'll, I'll facilitate this thing for the whole group. But again, to be perfectly clear, it's for church groups, youth groups, schools, nonprofits. If you want to pay us, you can pay us. That's fine. Okay. But that's not the point of this whole deal. So again, go to TomMatShow.com, tell us what you're doing, what you need, and we'll do our We'll do our best. We'll do our best to pull this together for you. Okay. All right. We're going to jump back into this story here because I got a feeling that this last segment is going to be something special. All right. So I asked the guys during break, come up with a story. Jake's going to go first. He's going to tell a story about this. Again, you guys know that I'm the non hunter non-fisher, non-know anything about this. So when he tells these stories about these waves and these boats and the Bering Sea and all this, when Tony told me about this, I was like, what? And huh? And so, okay, I get it. I understand, but I, I kind of don't. Tony, you're going to sit back and you're going to do a rebuttal to the story that your pal Jake's going to share with us. All right, Jake, you ready? You got this thing yeah. ready to go? Okay. So first, you, a lot of people will get jobs or do things in their life because they want money or they want to get somewhere, right? I don't lead that way. When we have situations on the boat like fire, which is the most dangerous, flooding, uh, maybe a, a, a crane falls over or something, I'm not looking for the guy who has the title. I'm looking for the individual who wants and is willing to do the job. So when I have my station bill and you write who's, do who's doing what, the station bill on a boat tells, tells the crew uh, what their jobs are in case of X emergency. So if it's fire, you have your engineer get the fire equipment, right? So now that we've established that, I don't put the engineer specifically in charge. I ask who is the individual that wants and is willing in all cases to go down to that engine room and possibly die. That's how I hire my people. That's how I lead my people. And with Tony, he wanted to do this job. It wasn't a bucket list thing. It wasn't a, it, it wasn't something he just wanted to do to have under his belt. He really wanted to do the job. He wanted to get his butt kicked. So we brought him out there. And, and crab fishing itself is extreme fishing. It's all on its own. It's a, it, it's a sport. You have active jobs like throwing the hook and climbing these towers of pots, you know, that go up 20, 30 feet sometimes. And anyway, so we're sitting there and I lead from the front as well as in the back. So I go out on deck and I do bait. I do all, all, all you'll see me sweeping and cleaning and I don't care what the job is. It's all the same to me. So we're sitting out there, Tony's doing bait. It's terrible weather this season, and we have constant 20-foot seas, which, again, is a, from the trough, the very bottom is about 40 feet. So when you see them, they're, oh, they're 100-footers. No, they're probably about 25. So 
huge weather. And we're all sitting there and everybody just loves Tony because um, they're getting to be in the presence of somebody they never thought they otherwise would, would be with. They're with the neurosurgeon and not just the neurosurgeon, he's head of neurosurgeon. Anyway, so we're out there. Tony's just being quiet, filling up his bait bags, right? And then it's pretty heavy. You have a bait bag that weighs about 20 pounds. And then you, uh, if I'm baiting, I bait with about 40 to 60, sometimes 100 pounds of fish. And so he's carrying these things around. And Tony's not a big guy like my, myself. He was in college <laughs> when he played football. Uh, but now he's, you know. Anyway, he looks over. We're all sweating because this isn't crab fishing in the Bering Sea is very, very physical and, and physically demanding. So you're sweating if you're doing the job right, like you're playing a sport. That's why I love it. And that's why it's amazing. And it, it, it stands above all the other fisheries because of its proactiveness. Anyway, I'm sitting there and I look over and Tony looks to all of us, right? And it's nasty out. I mean, my gantry for my forward mass stands above 35 feet tall. The waves are above them, you know? So you're looking up and you look over to Tony and he looks over and goes, this is like, this is like neurosurgery. <laughs> and we're like, what? No, it's not. He's like, no, for real, man. <laughs> we're, like, we're like, no, it's not. It's not. He's like, no, trust me. You guys don't know what neurosurgery is. I know what crab fishing is. This is like neurosurgery, man. And we're like, what the? I mean, I'm really trying hard not to cuss right now, but we were like, what the hell is he talking about? All right. I mean, he's being crazy. All right, all right, all right. You set that up really well. And I want to give Dr. Avellino a second to kind of have a, a, a just a, his takeaway on all that. Tony, what, again, what were you thinking doing this? I mean, and, and you're just like finding your element with like that crazy running stuff that you do. And do you always go for like the most, the most radical extreme events? Do you have to find the hardest thing in the world to do? Or, or what? I mean, because this sounds completely awful to me. I mean, it sounds so bad. Jake, great job you, describing that. You know, Tony, go ahead. I uh, must say that um, um, it's an incredible physical labor. Um, but, but what I can say is, is when you're in the middle of the Bering Sea, it's a very peaceful feeling. You know, and uh, and and I often say that in the operating room, I put other people's lives at risk. But when I'm on that boat, when your life is at risk, it's a whole different ballgame. But 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 there's lots of similarities between the operating room and in crab uh, deck. But most importantly, there's no room for error. Um, and 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 I think when you're on that boat. When, when the waves and the wind, you know, um, you know, there's no room for error and you have to keep very, very calm, uh, you know, but, but what it comes down to is the captain sets the tone, the captain sets the culture. Um, and, uh, and if you, like Jake said, I mean, his team on deck is an incredible team, uh, but it really starts with the top, Jake, um, is at a point now in his career, contrary to when he first started as a captain, I hope I can say that, is uh, he gets to pick and choose who he wants, you know, and uh, um, and so when you're on that club deck, you're sort of the elite of the elite athlete, um, and to give you some perspective, I mean, it's not unusual, Jake can, can answer this, but people lose probably 15 to 20 pounds. You know, I mean, uh, it is really, I mean, hard work, you know, I mean, it's grueling, but, but, but if you look at, uh, but as, as a surgeon, you're sometimes up and down on a crab bit, uh, boat, um, you, uh, it's not unusual for you to be up, um, uh, but the difference is in the operating room, we're warm, uh, and, uh, you know, and, uh, and it's really cold, at times, you know, but, but, you know, I, I I must say that being in the Bering Sea, two things. One, it gives you an appreciation of the powerful of the water. And two, 
it gives you the appreciation of beauty. I mean, you know, because it's an incredible feeling when you see the whales, the birds, you know, uh, you know, and, and when you see these crabs uh, coming on deck, it's like, wow. I mean, you know, this stuff came from the sea. I mean, you know, it's, uh, you know, plus, I mean, in, in all those different towns uh, in the Aleutians, I mean, you get to see places and meet people that very few people meet or see. That's such a great story, Tony. All right, so we got about two minutes to go before we got to wrap this bad boy. And I want to get a, a real quick takeaway from each of you. Jake, you first. What would be a takeaway for the listeners on your relationship with Tony? And then, Tony, I want to get the same thing to you. Hopefully, we can get this thing squeezed in. Go ahead, Jake. Let's let's take about 45 seconds, and then each of you get a chance to just kind of throw it out there to the listeners. Go ahead, please. You will become whatever you believe you are. Everything starts right now. Everything is right now. So you can't, you can't, whatever you think that you are, that's what you're going to be. So if you tell yourself you're a loser, that's what you're going to be. If you tell yourself you're going to be an astronaut and you are an astronaut, you'll eat like an astronaut and you'll become that astronaut. That is the main thing. If you want to believe whatever, that's what you're going to be. It's, it's a great world. Tony, go ahead. You got 30 seconds. Yeah, so, uh, so I have to tell Jake is, uh, as uh, Walt Disney used to say, if you can dream it, you can d- 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 do it. Uh, you know, so if you can dream it, you can do it. But most importantly is I think the, uh, the friendship and journey that Jake and I have, have done is what we hope to do in the next three or four years is really help uh, help in three ways. One is how to make this world better. But first of all, is I think a a lot of the learnings and teachings that Jake and I can teach um, healthcare workers how to make healthcare more safe. Two is how to raise awareness of mental health. Uh, And then three is hopefully give people the tools to be their best. That's great, Tony. You, You hit it perfectly. If our show fits your business or group's mission, everybody, we want to be a service to you. Hit us up. Go to the website, TomMetShow.com. Always remember, before you can share love with others, you must love yourself first. Thanks to my pals. Jake, you're the you're awesome. Tony, you're the best. Love you guys for doing what you do. Thank you for coming on. Brock Fletcher, Craig Styles, Sandy Matt. Talk to everybody next weekend. Have a great week, everybody. Go out and ignite your life. Remember, we are the RFZ, the Refirement Zone, and the Tom Matt Show is a production of Boomers Rock Media. We're out.